from my place. That's where I come from. And the man told, turned to her and, said, and told her, you tell her that those words came from our place to her place. <laughs> they belong to us. They are our children. It's our canoe that discovered their islands. And I was very humble for that. And then uh, he again said, uh, we still have our language. Tell her she has lost hers. And you know, that really hit home. What happened to us? And it's a good thing that we had these people with dreams that wanted to bring back the canoe. How so important our culture, our culture to put pride in our young people. Our young people who did not know who we were began to ask questions, wanting to know it's this generation. This generations that are demanding answers, that are demanding to say, who am I? Who was my kupuna? Where have the land gone? And we are showing them. We are showing them that the canoe came, discovered Hawaii. Not one nail was on that canoe. It was all lacking. And there was no motor, no nothing. They came from because of the stars. They could read what was up in the sky. And they talked back to the navigator. The navigator knew everything around him. He was a very important person because he knew everything that was in his head. He did not have books to read only from the knowledge of his kupuna that he knew how to sail with the stars and find Hawaii. The alaka'i that was so important, the ali'i. And to, for me to tell the young people, be proud of who you are. The heritage belongs to you because those people that first came and discovered Hawaii were all of royal blood. They were all chiefs. There could not be a commoner on board those canoes because the commoner could not stand above his ali. He would have had to crawl on that canoe. And when the ali went to sleep, he would be in the ocean. So I always talk to young people. Be proud. Your beginning, your beginning was a great beginning. Be proud of who you are today. And now our young people, our new age students, all are coming. And they feel the pride because they still are here. <laughs> Otherwise, they would have been gone a long time ago. But uh, really, I am very grateful for being a kupuna. Because I got to see Tahiti in all those places. And this last voyage, I'm very grateful. Thank you. Oh, what a beautiful place Saipan was. You know, when I went to the highest spot they had and I looked at their beauty, it was different from ours. Theirs was the ocean. You can stand on that spot and see the whole island clear around, but it was a different colored seas that they had. And it was the smoothness, and then you see the waves coming in, and all those battleships that are rusting, they all there, you remember the Second World War. And there are stories there that they share with us, but it's the people. The people were so wonderful to us. They shared whatever they had. And the island people, they too need to save their culture. They too have been overrun. And as we talk to them, we share with one another and we feel 
the togetherness of island people. Because we have to realize that uh, we receive something from our ancestors that no one can take away. We were brought to an island, a beautiful island, and we have tried our best to keep it the way our ancestors had it. But of course, that's no, that's unknown no now with all those buildings coming up and cutting down all trees. You know, um, I feel so much about the canoe because I feel once the canoe start again on the seas, then our language comes back with our Punana Leo, our No Iyao. You know, it's a dream that a kupuna has to again stand tall. And like our young men can say, ku kanaka Maori and be proud. And we are grateful. We have somebody like Claire, Shad, Shorty, that shares the dreams that they have. And their families who work in the back and do all the back work that we do not see. And to them we owe the Makali too. And all those, even if they only gave a dollar or, or more, they cannot help in a canoe, or like the UH students come down and just scrape bumps off the branches. You know, all those little things goes into the Makali and she has a big heart. She does. And you know, these people, like the navigator, the other parties, they all think they're the one <laughs> guide that canoe, the crew. They think they're bringing the canoe to Pine Island. But Aunt Ole, all you have to do is steer her straight towards the island turn her mast around so she can catch that wind as she's on her own. <laughs> Anything them the one. <laughs> they there, there to guide her. And I'll give her a little pet and say, keep on going, old lady, with it. <laughs> well, in the night when it's so lonely and she's on her own, and you know, you there and you say, that's all right, girl. I'm beside you. Yeah. You know, that's all the Makaliti needs. To be loved. Because if you love, she feels it. And she loves you back. But then if you are angry, or if you're sick, she feels that too. And she's heavy. Because she loves everyone on their canoe. I know I talk too much, but <laughs> I get carried away. And uh, I hope she writes the right things down. <laughs> you know why? My son bought this slip of paper from an uh, advertiser, and when I read it, and I saw my name, and I saw Clay's name, but underneath there it said that Marie Salmon was the granddaughter up the navigator. <laughs> and I said, oh no, I'm not that old. <laughs> and I think he was cross. And I was telling my grandchildren, get me that guy's name, I gotta tell him, but I'm not a granddaughter. I'm a great, 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 great. <laughs> and in this, I would say, thank you. Thank you. You want to get me the head. <laughs> E a la maina mukue a la ke aloha Boa e ke aloha, ke aloha valendo e E 